this video we're going to take a quick look-see at the MFJ 941D and the 941E. The 941D is an older product. This was given to me by my XYL for my birthday in about 1992. This was back in the day when she would buy me radio gear for birthday and Christmas. And unfortunately that ended. But anyway, she had good taste. Now what I would do is I'd go through a catalog and I'd point to what I wanted and then she'd just get it. But that was cool. So anyway, um, I've had this since 92. This has been literally my, my, my go-to antenna switch. Um, and then uh, the secondary use was basically for an antenna tuner. And the reason why I would do that is because I could put my, um, my dummy load on the bypass coax and then I never did use this um, on any sort of a wire but you can use for your balance wire your coax one two and then coax two and one direct so I really like that most of the time I usually ran in coax one and two direct when I ran this on my beam I would run this on my vertical and then this was my horizontal and then sometimes I would put my ground plane on here or I'd go back and I'd put the dummy load on here and um, I would run my uh, ground plane here and then my beam. So it's very flexible, so that's why I used it a lot. And I also like the fact that if, if I did go up to 10 meters or something like that, my SWRs were a little high, I could just touch them up here real quick, and uh, that was a very handy thing to do. I like the old school meter, just the straight standard old school meter with your power SWR um, function switch here that would, you know, toggle this back between reading SWR and power output. I like the 30 and 300 watt scale. I used it in uh, 30 watt scale quite frequently. And then forward and reverse. SWR sensitivity. And then of course transmitter, inductor, and antenna matching. Now we're going to go to the new unit here, okay? This has the crosshair meter, which... Um, yeah, I'm kind of not a fan of that. I think it's just because I'm used to this. So I'm sure the modern ham would really like this. Um, I just, I kind of like the old school. Um, on this switch here, we have the backlight lamp on and off, and you're going to need an external 12 volt supply for that. And then we have the 30 and 300 watt scale. On this switch down here, we have dummy load, balance line, coax one, coax two in the tuner section. Then we can, of course, bypass this or go direct like it was marked on the other tuner. And that's kind of odd that we have the dummy load through and, and whatnot. And I honestly have never played with these. Um, I have not hooked a dummy load up to them. So I'm not sure if this is just dummy load straight through on both of them or this is tuning through the dummy load, which would not make sense, quite honestly. All right, transmitter, inductor, and antenna. So let's take a look at the inside and then we'll take a quick overview of the rear panel. Okay. So the old one right here, and sorry about the shadow. Let's see if I can I'll try to eliminate that. So as you can see, we've got a big giant board here. We have our little micro ballon here. Even though this is tuners rated at 300 watts, if I was going to run through the ballon, I'd probably say, especially if my antenna was way off, I, I wouldn't maybe go with more than 100, 150 watts through here. Our panel mount connectors that are riveted in on this one. Our big coil, our taps off the coil. Nice little selector switch there. And very, very simply made. Um, when I first bought this unit, I found a little ball of solder down here in the corner. And then, of course, I touched up all the solder joints. Back in the 90s, every, well, actually, it honestly hasn't changed. Everybody slams MFJ. All the hammy hams slam MFJ. Well, it's mighty fine junk, it's cheap junk, etc., etc., um, well, I'll tell you what, I don't want to spend four or $500 for a tuner, but I want a tuner that has some features to it. And that's why I like this one. I got to be honest with you. This tuner has never failed me. Yeah, I went through and did redid some solder joints and got the little ball out of there and stuff. This thing has been awesome. The only thing that's failed on this is my little knob came off and I have this in a parts bin somewhere and I need to put it back on. Honestly, I don't really use it that much for an SWR meter, but I, you know, I can just tune it with my finger. Um, okay, let's go over to here. In a way, they've cheapened it up, and in a way, they've improved it. And um, I think possibly this board is an improvement. 
Okay, the Balan, however, is still pretty much kind of a cheesy Balan. I like how they uh, put screws with star washers on there to mount the uh, SO239s. That's an improvement over the old one that is riveted in. The coil seems to be about the same in the new and old. Now the board is marked 1995, however I bought this in at the end of 2019 and this was actually made in 8 of 19, it was when it was produced. And um, I don't really have any dates in here in the old one, do I? No, no, okay. Anyway, this is 92 vintage. And so, in opening this one, because I just, I just do it no matter what, no matter what I buy, I'm sure you guys are the same way. I got to open it up just to see what it looks like inside. All right. So the open air capacitators in here uh, don't quite seem to be the quality of the old unit right here. Sorry about the lighting, guys. But they work and they function very well. This is what kind of blew me away. Yeah, I. by the way, I did reduce some solder joints. It looks like I should probably get this one too. But... um. I've done this a couple times. When I bought it, I had to fix it. And in using this again, I have to fix it. But what it is, is on the inductor selector, when it was new, I had to go in and tighten that little nut down there. It looks like I'm going to have to do that again. And I may just go to the hardware store and put a star washer on both sides of it and then just kind of cinch it down because that's a little goofy. See how that goes? But uh, I think I paid, what, $129 for this? Well worth every penny. Would I do it again? Oh, heck yeah. If these two units got destroyed, I'd have no problem in repurchasing one of these. So if you see one of these at a ham fest or a CB swap meet or whatever, um, I definitely recommend it. Pick one up. And if you're looking for one brand new, I'd say go for it. They're very versatile. They make a hell of an antenna switch. And, um, yeah, they're good pieces of gear. I really like them, actually. And I have other MFJ product. I've really got no complaints against it. I'm getting what I'm paying for it. And quite honestly, you know, $129. Um, geez, that's cheap. A lot of bang for your buck. All right. I've got a big roller. Uh, I think it's called a differential T-tuner from MFJ. I'll bring that one out. And I'll show you guys the insides of that. All right. That is the MFJ 941 D and E. Thanks for watching.